Zero? Which, yeah. You know, whatever week it is. There's football. I show up on Friday. I go where I'm told I have fun. It's yes, night. absolutely. And it was a fun night of high school football, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. And our showcase game of the week that was voted on by you guys earlier you this week. It was a great ball game. Arkadelphia, we talked about it all week long last week. They mm -hmm. dominated Sylvan Hills. Looked fantastic. Kyron Harrison, how many? Not one. Not two, not three, not four, not while, five, not six. Well, after this game, he was up to seven touchdowns at that point when I had to come back and start What's cutting these highlights. What's crazy to me is that he was not a running back last year. Exactly. They moved him over from the defensive side, and Coach Harris and I talked about this. He said he thought that Arkadelphia's offensive line mm. and their running backs were their most improved from last year oh, to this sure. year. And I think through the first two games, you can definitely see that reflected in what they've been able to do in the ground game. Well, and I have to give Arkadelphia a lot of credit because they came out, scored on the very first drive. Looks like, uh-oh, this could be another runaway like it was against Sylvan Hills last week. Mm -hmm. And Benton stormed right back. Coach Harris's defense got it together. I thought Garrett Brown played extremely well at quarterback. Obviously, Benton is a hostile environment. They took a 14-7 lead, but Arkadelphia kept responding. They obviously get the win. They're 2-0. and And now if we go back to last season, if we're counting them, started 0-5, <laughs> won 10 games in a row, won the state championship, in 2018. Now they've won two in a row. So, Arkadelphia Badgers, 12 straight victories. Unbelievable by Coach Eldridge. I mean, the question is looking at their schedule, and I know conference play is going to be tough. 7 4 A. But <laughs> who's going to stop them? I, here's the like. Here's it's going to be fun to watch. I, I'm just saying right now, if you're watching high school football, and we're going to mm -hmm. hit all the classifications, but 4A, especially the 7-4A, Arkadelphia is the cream of the crop. Robinson's right there. Yep. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. They got a huge victory over Rogers tonight. They've mm -hmm. beaten two 7A teams. I, I mean, Nash, Box sites up and coming. Box sites up and coming. Nashville's right there. It, it's just 7-4A. It's well, unbelievable. And we talk about it every week, but this is exactly why Arkadelphia and Robinson, they go out, they schedule those early season games against the Bentons, against the Rogers, because when they get into conference play, they're going to beat each other up because they're the SEC of Central Arkansas. Well, and real quick for Benton fans, let me say, I know yeah. you're probably disappointed. Obviously, you're 0-2 on the season. You lost to the 7A champion, Bryant. Tough and ball game. And the back-to-back 4A state and, champions. And then you lose a tough ball yeah. game to Sylvan Hills. And Brace, well, I'm sorry, not Sylvan Hills, Arkadelphia, obviously. Uh, and then they've got Cabot for their next game. So you could start 0-3, but they could end up just right back at the state championship, yeah. just like Arkadelphia did last year. Yeah, no, and again, you know, I keep referencing this conversation that I had with Coach Harris because I went down to talk to him on Monday as part of our showcase game previews, and I asked him, you know, how do you match up against Arkadelphia? And he straight up told me that the only difference between the Panthers mm -hmm. and the, uh, the Badgers were the fact that Benton has more kids that go to their school. Right. Talent-wise, he said these two teams are exactly the same. So it was there's, fun to watch. there's no shame in, in the way they've started the season. I know mm. you'd always rather want to come away with two wins as opposed to two losses. Right. But you're exactly right. This could mean nothing once you get into conference play and you, and you start going through the 6A. A lot of football left. And also, yes. you want to see how teams that won it all last year respond. Well, folks, if you're a Little Rock uh, Christian fan, let me tell you, your team is responding <laughs> nicely. Obviously, they yes. go on the road last week, beat Batesville. Mm -hmm. Bologna, they got hit in the mouth. Right off the bat. Uh, I was shocked <laughs> to see how this game started. And because there was only a minute in the show, I had to cut out so much stuff that happened. But uh, right off the bat, can I tell you, though, by the way, uh, this is the first time I've got to see Draven Smith mm -hmm. in person. Man, he was impressive. He's a powerful runner. He can sneak in between tackles. That was the very first play from scrimmage, guys. So there was a Valonia lead just 14 seconds into the game. What you didn't see, and it was very uncharacteristic of Little Rock Christian tonight. Mm -hmm. I know Coach Co. used not going to be very happy with how they started <laughs> the game because they fumbled the ensuing kickoff after the touchdown. Mm -hmm. uh, they were very lucky that they held Valonia, then Valonia missed the field goal, but then they coughed it up again. So they right. gave Valonia two additional shots at a touchdown. Uh, you know, they got a missed field goal and they got a strip to go the other direction. So very, very lucky. Their defense was huge there. This could have gone an entirely different way, but of course then you start getting the ball into Kendall Givens' hands, and once you do that, it's done. Little Rock Christian also had a pick six. So the score 56 to 20 looks like a very convincing little, little, deceiving. little, yeah. little deceiving there. Looks <laughs> like a very convincing Little Rock Christian win. Uh, could have gone the other way, but mm -hmm. as you said, the important thing is, is how you respond when things don't go your way early I was in the game. really anxious to see how they would play without Justice Hill. I'll be honest. Everyone talked about him. I didn't think they would win a state championship last year. They upset PA. I yeah. wanted to see how they'd perform without Justice. So far, so good. So far, so yeah. good. Uh, I was more impressed with Kendall mm -hmm. uh, in their running game. Special uh, K. <laughs> yeah, Special K gets all the shout-outs shout out tonight. Twitter, Love Special K. Um, 
I, I think their quarterback play is going to need to be developed a little bit, right. and that's something that Coach and I talked about before the season. I've got a little bit of an unproven quarterback, but they've got enough depth and enough seniority around that it's not going to be a problem. And mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, I really got to see that tonight. Well, it was fun. It was yeah. fun to watch. And what's also fun to watch is when two first-year head coaches <laughs> go head-to-head. Of course, we're talking Hayden's about – so confused because Cabot doesn't look anything very, like Cabot. Very, very strange to me. <laughs> of course, Cabot, first-year head coach Scott Reed, uh, first-year mm-hmm. head coach Rod Stinson down at Pine Bluff going head-to-head. Cabot and Pine Bluff. Mitch Lilly, the Lone Oak man himself, made the trip down. He has your highlights. Pine Bluff looking to kick off 2019 with the win in the opener. But early on, it was Cabot and Scott Reed getting off to the great start. First quarter, Rhett Thurman with the 35-yard field goal. Three-zip Panthers later. Still in the first quarter, Cabot getting it done on special teams again. High snap, and the Panthers get a safety on Pine Bluff. Five-nothing visitors. Then Cabot going to the air. That's right, Cabot going to the air. Tyler G, Cairo Rudolph. Big gain on the play, but the drive would stall. The Zebras and Rod Stinson get going from there in the second quarter. Tyler Foote showing off his wheels right here, moving the chains and keeping the drive alive. A few plays later, Foote's showing off his arm this time, living it to Xavier Turner, five-yard throw and catch. Pine Bluff on top, 7-6 from there. Both teams trade TDs. Then it's Pine Bluff with the interception. Zebra's up 13-12 at the half, but Cabot comes back to get the win. We uh, settled down and started playing well. Thought we played uh, with great poise in the second half. Our kicking game was great all night. And then we had some guys step up and make big plays. But the best thing is we hung together because the first half we had a few hiccups. So the Scott Reed era starts with a victory over Pine Bluff. Cabot getting off on the right foot. Of course, you want to get off on the right foot in this rivalry. Let me tell you, Fordyce and Rising, <laughs> it don't get no better than that. Of course, David Lippman made the trip down uh, right. this evening. He had a good time. I know we had a great time as We're always. A lot of time he was tailgate. He was drumming out there. But the Red Bugs getting a huge win over rival Rising. I got to tell you, folks, I've seen both of these schools. And I got to say, as far as small school football, it doesn't feel like small school football. It is absolutely unbelievable. And coach, my man, <laughs> go, favorite, going off, man. <laughs> my favorite, favorite coaching soundbite in the history of my career as of right now. It's just things go back and forth. The great rivalry. I mean, me and Coach Toddy are good friends. And I mean, a couple of years ago, they called a timeout and raised their hands up to their fans and everything on their sideline. And I told our guys all week long, I said, guys, if we get the chance, if we get this game won, I said, I'm going to the Red Bug and I'm pointing to everybody in Rising. We won the ball game, and it's a whole year. They got to sit there and take it. <laughs> now, let me tell you, I was, year. I was down there on Thursday. I guess right. that was yesterday. It feels like it's been a lot longer, but I was down there. <laughs> he and I talked. We sat and we talked about the tradition, and uh, I would have never guessed that the very nice, mild-mannered coach that I talked to would have said that, but I love it. Sometimes Absolutely you just, sometimes you just got to turn it up. Yes. And really quick before we get out of here, too, want to talk about a team that is turning heads already this yeah. season. The Little Rock Central Tigers. 62 to nothing. 62 to nothing we over Rogers you. Heritage. We see you, Coach Lasker. Absolutely. And, you know, it's been an uphill battle for the Tigers over the past couple of years. But you got to believe Coach Laster out of Dallas is trying to turn this thing around. The 7A Central, in my opinion, is as good as it gets besides the 7-4A. Obviously with North Little Rock, Bryant, Cabot, Conway, and now Central. And I don't want to leave out Catholic either because they looked uh, they uh, looked very good tonight. Yeah, big win over Cat- Sil- Sylvan Hills, 35-15. Catholic really good. The 7A Central looks loaded, but i got to say, mm-hmm. Little Rock Central, big kudos to you guys. Yeah. Two very impressive wins to start the season. Just 2-0, and oh, but Coach Laster and Little Rock Central. The statement is. wins, though. And you know you hear, especially like in the NFL or baseball, let's, you know, people will say in baseball when the Yankees are good, it's good for baseball. Yeah. Let's say when the <laughs> Cowboys are good, it's good for football. I have a little personal in there. That's what I'm saying. When Little Rock Central is good, it is good for high school football <laughs> in the state. And hail to the old gold, or Craig says it literally every day on the set. He is such a proud Central grad. Is he so still wait, back there? Wait, no, no, he's not. He left. He left. <laughs> so cool to see Central get back to their winning ways. And uh, it's fun. It's exciting. It's yeah. really, really exciting to see. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's just good to see. I, li- I like to see kids. Li- we never like to see kids lose. So mm-hmm. it's always good to see them out there getting wins and getting getting a history historic program. <sighs> fun night. Back on the right track, yeah. we got to get you out of here. I know. we got to hit the road. Got to go to bed, y'all. Got to go to Oxford tomorrow. We have got to get Dorian out here. She is going to be in Oxford tomorrow. Remember the Hogs playing at 6.30 on the SEC mm-hmm. Network, taking on the Rebels. Hogs on Super Saturday. After Follow that. me on social. I'll be all over it. Facebook, 
Twitter, Instagram, any social media channel. What was your line? What'd you say? What about Someone's got to win, y'all. Someone's, Someone's got to win. win. Someone's <laughs> got to win. It should be a good time. Thanks again. Be sure to join us tomorrow right here on TH. Have a good one.